Today we're going to show setting up a Oak System Centroid Control to tie into some Fadal servo amps. We've got a Fadal EMC machine that we're retrofitting that we're using an Oak System. The customer wanted to reuse his existing amplifiers and motors which are Fadal model amp 040s which is actually a Glentech drive. It's a brushless AC servo, works off a of velocity mode input. So we're going to go through some of the initial settings and then some of the tuning that we need to do for setting this up to work. We're doing it here in the shop on the bench because it's easier to do than out on the machine to initially get it set up. So one well, of the first things that we need to do is there's a few parameters that we need to set up to tell it for velocity mode. So we're going to go into the parameters and parameter 256 needs to be set to a 1 which is set up for velocity mode then we need to go to parameters 357 through 359 which those are the max RPMs of the drive which on this setup is 1500 RPM then we need to go to parameter 57 which is set up for load meters if it's, the machine is going to use those from the servo drives which this one is if we set that to 31, that is set up for all the first five axes all being used for the analog input from the drive. Um, there's some tuning values in the PID that we need to set up that we'll go through those in a second. But first I want to show setting up. We have to, one of the most important ones is the encoder counts per revolution and the motor turns per inch. So we're going to go into setup, config, PID. If you notice there's an ABS position on the screen and that's actually counts from the encoder. So on the motor we're going to make a mark where it's at. We've got right now we got zero on the ABS position. If the motor's been moved it'll count something there. You can either just easiest way is turn the control off, turn it back on again, that number will zero out. Now we're going to go 10 full revolutions. and stop back on the mark. Now we're going to look at what number is in the ABS position. If you take that number, divide by 10, it'll tell you how many counts per revolution the encoder is. There's pretty much industry standards you'll be able to, you'll be able to get close enough to tell which one it is. This one's 32768, which we set in here, which is an 8192 count encoder, quadded, means times 4, and it gives you 32768. The other one we need to set up is the motor revs per inch here. That one, you're just going to have to turn the, turn the motor, basically one revolution. You can see how much it moves in one revolution. Through math, you can back, backward calculate that to see how many revolutions of the motor it takes to move um, one inch. You set those in there. We're going to show some of the tuning and initial setups we need to do with the drive. We're going to go in velocity mode with the Fidal servos. There's PID tuning inside the centroid, which works great for tuning in and getting good response out of a servo setup. But ideally, the servo drive needs to be tuned well, too. So there's a few things that we're going to do with that. We've got it all set up now. I've disconnected the centroid command, and I've tied in my own command to the drive, which is just a little battery box. So we're going to use step commands to it. First thing I'm going to do is I got zero command to the drive. I'm going to enable the servo drive. And you see the motor is drifting. It's because the balance is not set right in the drive. So I'm going to go to the servo drive. There's a little balance adjustment pot. And I'm going to turn that until the, until the servo motor. I can actually make it go one way or drift the other way. Ideally you want to get it set to where the motor is as close to stop as it can be. That will make the centroid tuning more accurate. Now I'm going to go to the, into the centroid control. I'm going to go into their PID screen. And there's a PID config. And you see there's a, a line graph on here. And I can see when I do my step command to the drive, I can actually see the encoder counts generating what would be on the old school servos attack feedback. I'd like to get a little bit more resolution out of it. So I'm going to change the scaling so I get a little bit higher. 
And you can see now, as soon as I give it a command, it goes instantly up and instantly down. This is a really well-tuned servo. Because you can see the, I don't get any overshoot or, or ringing or, or waving us on the XL and the D cell. So this, this servo is tuned, tuned good. So we can go ahead and go on to tying it in with the centroid tuning now. We're going to continue doing some of the tuning setup on this Fidal setup. One of the first things we're going to do is actually now that we've got the encoder set up and our wires all hooked up, we're going to do a little bump move on it to make sure nothing, nothing runs away and everything's in good shape. Ideally, if it's on the machine, you want to try and hand crank it out to the middle of the table in case it does run away. you got room to, to stop it. And we're going to go to the PID screen and I want to look at the absolute position. We take it out of e-stop, enable the servo drive. Now if I give it one little go to increment and just give it a, a bump move, it should only move a few encoder counts. If it takes off and wants to run away and gets a position error, you can reset it, stop it, try it the other direction. If, if it runs away the other way and shows a position error, but it does count, you probably need to change your A and the B channels on the encoder. Swap the A with the B and the A not with the B not because it's uh, counting backwards coming back into the control. Once we've got that set up, we want to go into the PID config and there's values that we put in. KP, KI, KV1, XL are the most important ones. Uh, there's some default settings that Centroid recommends to start with. We've got some of those set up for drives already. Uh, we're going to try KP of 0 0.04, a KI of 0 0.0005, and a KV1 of 70. XL is 0.5. Sometimes we do point, or 0.25, which is a little quicker. 0.5 we use sometimes. Now we want to go, if we go into edit program, we can write a little program which moves the axis back and forth to give us our, our scope shot. You can adjust that to be whatever amount of moves you want. We're going to do run program, cycle start, <clears throat> and you'll see you've got some green line is your commanded velocity, the orange line is your error, how much error we're getting. First things I usually like to t try tuning is I turn the Tune the KV1, you can use the page up, page down buttons to change it live while it's doing it. And you can see right now when we start, we're going way off screen with our error in the same direction of the move. That means that the motor is lagging behind the command. So we're going to increase the KV1 and try and bring that back down. I usually get up to about 85. If it's still not bringing it down enough, you can see it's already dropped it down some. Then I go over to the KP and try increasing that. And the main sections you're looking for is right when it stops and right when it starts. Uh, whenever it starts and whenever it stops, whenever it's taken off. And you can see as I increase the KP, we're coming in closer. And see right now, if I move my mouse over and click right on where that's at, that shows me my error. I'm really only out of position by six tenths on that D cell move, which that isn't bad at all, but we're going to just play with it and see if we can't get it better. If I go with the KV1 and the KP, too high, you'll actually see I go the other way on my XL, opposite of what the move is. That means I'm getting ahead of where the control thinks that it needs to be. So that would be an indication I need to lower my KP and lower my KV1. And you notice every time I give it a little bump while it's doing, you, it'll have an error. But the main thing you're looking for is the start and the stops. Now that looks pretty decent. And I've got a, 
The Ki is the integral, more of a time-based, and if I lower that, you'll see it kind of mushes out a little bit, and it takes longer for it to actually, once it gets out of position, it's taking almost a full second before it gets down to zero error. So you want, if, if that's the case, you want to increase your Ki to get this bump down to be a smaller, so it doesn't take, time base is this way, each one of these marks is one second, so that it doesn't take as long to actually get itself back into position. And you can see right now, everything looks real good. If our Ki was too big or Kp was too big, you might see some oscillations in the middle here. And we can actually, with our mouse, move around to different spots and see what our error is at that point. So basically, in steady state move, it's exactly where it needs to be. At the decel time, it's going out by four tenths. We go to our green line here and look and see that our motor is actually at that point it's running 1000 RPM. I can speed it up a little bit faster. See, we're running 1300 RPM. So these little windows over here tell you a lot of information on what you're doing. So from 0 to 1300 RPM and, and back, we're only falling out of position by 4 tenths. I'd say that servo is doing pretty good. Then you can just do save and exit. We'll save those parameters. Now you're good.